Hello everybody. In this video I'm going to show you how to set up the program called Virtual Win. So it's running on your own computer and it is configured. There are a lot of complicated options in this program. I'm going to make it really simple just by showing you my settings one step at a time so that you can copy me. If you're a, a real technical computer head then uh, it's a good idea to play around with these settings because this program is super, super powerful and you can do a lot with it. To start off with, uh, my recommendation is to download the Virtual Win program from portableapps.com. That is a website that uh, has downloads for programs that you can run right off of your flash drive. And uh, what makes that really useful in an educational environment is that you might have to move between different classrooms. This way uh, the program can follow you. You have to run it off of your flash drive. You don't have to install it on the computer. That means you don't need special rights or privileges in order to use this and since it's on that flash drive your settings follow you everywhere that you go. So let's get right into it. After you download and install the program you want to go to your taskbar and look for a uh, number. Uh, on my computer right now it's number 8 because I'm on desktop number 8. I'm on desktop number one. It shows me one. Double click on that. After opening that up, it's going to take you to your settings. Now, um, the first important setting is your desktop layout. Uh, how many virtual desktops do you want to have? I choose three wide by four deep. So that's uh, three rows said that wrong. That's, yeah, three, that's four rows and three columns. So if, if uh, I wrote that out as a grid, four rows, three columns. Anyway, three times four, that's 12, 12 desktops total. Then you can go down here and click, 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 click. Don't worry about what these settings are. Uh, just keep it simple and copy me. Uh, but do know that if you're a bit of a computer head, it's a good idea to uh, take a look at these and play around with them a little bit. You'll find out what they do and you'll realize how powerful Virtual Win is. It's ridiculously powerful. Okay, now we're going to the next tab called Hotkeys. And this tab is where you set up your hotkeys for sending commands to the program. And um, on your computer, when you start out, everything is going to look different. What you can do is select what you have and go delete. And then select the next line and go delete. And then I'm going to show you how to set up things the way they are on my computer. Um, so the way that you want to start out with is by choosing a command. There's this drop down list and so many options because it's such a powerful program that can do so many things. The only option that we care about is the one titled move to desktop number. And it starts out with the word nav which means navigate. Navigate, move to desktop number. Uh, so you select that and next you have a choice what number do you want to talk about? Uh, if you have 12 desktops, you have 12 numbers. And that's why I have 12. So I'm going to go to number 5. I want to make a special key press sequence that will take me to desktop number 5 and move me there instantly. So I choose desktop number 5. Next, uh, click in this rectangle and then press the keys that you want to have as your magical hotkeys. I'm going to hold down the control button 
and then go to my number keypad and press 5. And you can see that the program has recognized that. My hotkey is now control plus number 5. And what I want to do next is click on add. Ta-da! And that has now been added to my list. And so what you want to do on your computer, if you want to use my same settings, is uh, to just repeat that process for each of your 12 windows. Um, what I like to do is for windows 1 through 10, I'm using numbers 1 through 0 on my keypad. For 11 and 12, I'm using uh, Control plus F11 or Control plus F12. So you can use your function keys as well. Although if you do, uh, to avoid pro conflicts with other programs, you want to make sure that you're using a uh, combination of more than one key. So Control plus F12 works pretty good. Other programs don't uh, watch to see if you're holding down the control button. Our next tab has uh, properties for uh, changing desktops based on what we are doing with our mouse. And so I got a check mark on the very first option, Enable Mouse Desktop Changing. I also have a check mark over here for Enable Modifier Key Control. And so uh, that lets you choose a modifier key that has to be pushed at the same time that your mouse touches the edge of the screen. Now I can touch the edge of my screen and I'm not changing desktops, but if I hold down the control key when I do that, then my desktop will change. And it only changes when I'm holding down the control key. So uh, that's what that setting does. And it helps to stop me from accidentally switching desktops. Uh, it can be a little bit of a frustration to have your your virtual desktop change by accident. So that's what the modifier key will help you to stop. No more accidents. And as you can see, my favorite key for that is control. Uh, next, there's an option, delay before changing desktop. And that's 50 ms, 50 milliseconds. Uh, which is, uh, there's, there's 1,000 milliseconds in one second. So you do the math, this is 1 20th of a second. And uh, what that does is kind of like the modifier key. It helps to prevent me from changing the, by uh, accident. Uh, when I go to the edge of the screen, the program waits for me to continue touching the edge of the screen for this long. And you can choose how long that delay is going to be. I want it almost instantly, so I have it set at 50. There's an option called edge knocking, uh, which I don't use, but if you use that yourself, you'll find that the way to change desktops will require you to tap. So you go tap, tap on the right, or tap, tap on the left, tap, tap on the top, or tap, tap on the bottom. And that will then uh, change your desktop in the direction that you tapped. The next option is your mouse jump length. If you watch my mouse very carefully, you'll notice that it moves a little bit. So here I am. I'm in the center of the screen. I'm moving to the right. I'm going to switch desktops, moving nice and slow. 
Where is my mouse now? You would think it would be totally on the left hand side of my screen, but it's not totally on the left hand side of my screen. It jumped towards the center of the screen a little bit. And uh, that is because I have set a mouth jump, a mouse jump length value. Uh, there's an option here called uh, warping. Um, warping is what moves my mouse. Um, and the mouse jump length is also shared with uh, your edge knocking. So if I go and I tap and then I move right all the way to the middle of my screen and then I tap again, the computer is going to know that I didn't mean to switch. Uh, it's going to wait for me to go tap, tap, keeping my mouse close to the edge the whole time. So that, that mouse jump length is a shared property between those two different behaviors. And of course, like I said earlier, if you want to keep things simple, just follow what's already on the screen. Um, and I should probably stop talking too much because I'm going to make it seem like it's harder than it is. This is really actually a very easy program to use. Enable middle button desktop changing. One of the things that uh, you have with Virtual Win is if you put your mouse in the middle of your screen and then do a middle click, uh, it's not going to do it right now because I have my uh, properties open, my settings. I'm going to close my settings real quick. Now I can show you. So I do a middle click and now it's giving me an option menu and I can give it some commands. Uh, it's showing me all of the program windows open on my computer. And as you can see, I have a lot of stuff open. On uh, window number eight is a PDF file called the crickets in Times Square. So I can navigate to number eight and there's my file. But maybe I want to do some work on desktop number two. And what I can do is middle click and then select that PDF file and just bring it to where I am. So now it's with me on desktop number two. And um, when it comes to changing your active desktop, you can drag a program window with you when you do it. So uh, right now I'm on desktop number two. I'm going to drag this to number three. There I am. And now I'm going to go back to number two, dragging, dragging, and I'll just keep this on number eight because that's where I like it to be. Let's go back to our uh, configuration a little bit. So we were on the mouse tab and uh, you can see uh, that there's different options available for what will happen when you hit the middle click button. Uh, desktop changing for me is not enabled on uh, middle click. If it was, then I'm, uh, I think if I'm holding down the middle key on my mouse and I touch the edge, then it would uh, move me to the next desktop. The way I have it set up where it's no, yes, yes, uh, that's going to give you the uh, menu options that I just showed you. So now you've seen what my uh, configuration is and you know what happens when I hit the uh, middle click button. Next is modules. There's little add-ons that you can add to this program. If you're a tech head, look into it and I would recommend getting the module called WinList. Next is a tab called Expert and there is stuff on this tab that uh, I don't fully understand 
but I've played around with it and my favorite settings are shown right now. And those are the settings I recommend you to copy when you first start uh, trying out this program. And that's it. So uh, I've shown you how to go through your uh, configuration. I've shown you the settings that I'm using myself. And that's the end of my video. Go download that program. Try it out for yourself. And if you have any questions, go ahead and get in touch with me. And uh, I will answer those questions. And I might make some more videos or I might even uh, just make an update to this video. Because I want to make sure that everything I do for you is very simple to follow because if it's not simple then it's not useful right my job is to help you out not hold you back thanks for watching